Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Hello, everyone. This is Fred Scambade with Stan Obodiak. And greetings from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto as the major Junior A leaders, the Toronto Marlies, meet the Moscow Selects. There's the traditional huddle, which is a part of the Soviet scheme of playing hockey. In the nets tonight, Viktor Krivolopov, number 20. He uh, looks like a carbon copy of a fellow that we came to know and regard so very well. Just who Tretiak, are you thinking of there? <laughs> yes. The 20-year-old Army lieutenant who gave fits to the National Hockey League players. And at the other end, we have Mike Palmatier, number 30. There's Mike, and he's in the nets for the Marlies, the augmented Marlies. About Palmatier, Fred, they say that he has the quickest hand in junior hockey. We'll see how he uses his hand tonight. From the faceoff, it's the Solidukin line. That's the top line. Intercepted the pass there. Dylan. It's Dylan with Howe and Gold up. A little bit of heavy work right in center ice as Bob Daly. There's a shot and a good glove save by Krivolopov. We're going to see some robust checking in this game and that particular play. Two Marlboros knocked down one Russian there. Moscow on the move as that puck in behind the net. Now the Marlies, there's a man upset. There's going to be a penalty there. It was Ververgaard, or rather make that Woodyat who was upset. And here's the first penalty of the hockey game with number 13, Popov, getting the call. And the time at 3.03. Hooking the call at 3.03. So George Armstrong sends out Mark Hall, Dylan, Glenn Goldup, John Hughes on defense. There is Howe. No need to enumerate what his name means uh, as far as his dad is concerned. That hooking call is one of the easily committed infractions in international hockey. Another one is interference. Dylan stopped up as the Soviets keep it outside their zone. Now Dylan again over to Goldup. Goldup trying to get things set up. Man loose over in the point as they pound around the net and Kravolopov just stops play, which is the prudent thing to do. Nastasiev is out there with Volchenkov on defense. Martinik. There's his shot. Glenn Goldup has just returned from an injury and he doesn't seem to be showing anything the worse for it. He's a very strong hockey player and he should go up high in the universal draft. The name Goldup, of course, uh, brings back memories of his father, Hank, who played in the National Hockey League. Yeah, yeah. There's Hughes legging it back very speedily, leaves it for Daly. Now the Marlies to the attack. Dylan in it goes. Gold up to Dylan up against the boards. Volchenkov trying to hold it in there. Couldn't do it. Comes back to that point. A shot. Oh, just about tipped in there by Mark Howe. Brother Marty not playing as uh, he's injured. Good play there by Daly as the Soviets threaten. Now the Marley's on the move with Gold up. Trying to get around his man, and it's broken up by Martinuk. That puck seemed frozen down at the end there, but there was no whistle, and play resumed. It was a very dangerous... 28 seconds remaining in the penalty. As Marin going to the corner. Now Bordalo trying to work his way around. Oh, he's upset. There'll be another penalty, a shot. The Marlies now trying to get it out in front. And the call, Bordalo was tripped. So the Soviets run into another penalty just when their first penalty was expiring. This one at 4.52. That Paul and Bordelo is a beautiful stick handler. And it seemed the only way that the Russians could stop him was trip him. Titov is the uh, culprit for tripping at 4.52. So for 11 seconds, the Marlies will have a two-man advantage and the face-off in 
the Moscow Select Zone. So things are going to get a little warm for Provolopov, who's out there in the net. We have Filipov as Coach Mayorov sends out Solodyukin and Tedekin. The Russians will be playing two men short for 11 seconds here. The Marlboros trying to get a shot away right in front of the, Oh, Bortolo. Another shot. Now oh, the Marlies trying to get it around. They're only up by a man now as one man's return stopped at the defense. One of the Russians has returned to the lineup. They're one man short. Here's Ferguson. And Bortolo moving in right in front. Oh! And Devine, Kevin Devine, couldn't control that one. Marley's with a minute 21 seconds remaining in the penalty. They've come close, but really haven't had too many clear shots. Out into center ice again, Bortolo. Fred, this is a tremendously exciting hockey. They Trying seem to, to be going all the time. Shalimov. Now it comes to this side. With Terrakin, Terrakin hung up against the boards by Ferguson. But the Soviets doing quite an effective job as the puck tipped down into their own zone, but they've got control of that puck. Filipov, he loses, and then it comes around to uh, Thomas, who is one of the players added to the Marley lineup. Uh, comes to the far side as play scrambly. 34 seconds remaining in the penalty. And the Marlies ineffective during this penalty call. And they are called for icing with 13 minutes, 36 seconds remaining. 28 seconds remaining in the penalty to Titov. And no score as yet in the hockey game. There's something peculiar about Russian hockey. And when they have a man short, they don't fall entirely on defense. They still realize that you can score a goal when you are a man short. And quite often, you will see a man spotted out in the center ice and the pass go out to him and he breaks away. Back to the point. Shatilov and the Marlies with a pass over here for Winton. Winton, a drop pass, a good save. Beautiful. As Thomas was there. But the Soviet goalie... Kravolopov equal to the task and play is called. Well, there's Thomas. nothing wrong with Kravolopov on that uh, one, Fred. Do you think he's another tree jack? Well, it's a little early to decide. <laughs> <laughs> he played under seven minutes, but he's standing up quite well when the Marlies have had their chances. But during that power play effort where they had the uh, two-man advantage for a brief period, uh, they didn't seem to be too effective. Now they're coming back again. Here's Winton. Trying to get it in, and there's uh, some of the soccer style that the Soviets use. They'll <laughs> kick that puck out there if they can't do anything else. Now on the move, and he recovers, making his way out. As the Hamilton player, a long shot, easily handled. Nikitushkin reverses now as Winton was after him. Headman's that puck. Good pass. Lobanov, here's a shot, hit the post! Kapustin. It's a beautiful and, shot. And he had Palmatier right in his sights there. But I guess you've got to be lucky and you've got to have those fat, friendly posts going for you. Remain scoreless. 12 minutes, 30 seconds remaining in period number one of the game between the Moscow Selects and the Toronto Marlies. That Kapustin is one of the most dangerous men on the ice. He's a very, very fast skater. And some people are comparing him to Karmalov. Headman passes the Marlies on the move. Right in front, the jam it in. And it looks as though Woody App might have been the man. Jeff Woody App. The Marlies persisted with it. And they've taken a one to nothing lead at seven minutes, 46 seconds. We'll wait for the official on that one, but it appeared the way they were saluting Woody at that he was the man who did it.
from Jeffrey. Green and Boudreau and drawing Boudreaux. assists at 746. So the Marlies lead one to nothing. But here come the Soviets with Shatilov getting it in there. Belosuvov up against the boards as Martinuk moves in. The Duke's on the move. Boudreau trying to uh, make his presence uh, felt against Martinuk. They're up four checking, and that's Woody at, and here it's for another shot just off the target by Boudreau. There they jam it right in front. Boudreau again, he's buzzing around in there. They make his presence felt a long shot, stopped at the defense. Well, the Marley seemed greatly energized by that goal. They're going full blast now. There's Woody at in there with some effective work, and the Soviets off balance as they send it down into Marley territory over the red line, icing called. And the fans, and a very good crowd here, should be well above 14,000. We see some empty pockets, but well above 14,000 fans at Maple Leaf Gardens for this Moscow Marley game, and they're enjoying a first period of some very, very good hockey. I think there'll be much more than that, Fred. The seating capacity of the gardens is 16,316, and there's a couple of empty pockets, so you'll have a crowd of well over 15,000. That's Hughes. There's a shot right in front. Oh, and it just tipped to the side. Volchenkov now back giving chase with Estasiev. As Wayne Dillon is in. Here's a shot by Howe. Up on the far side, another shot. Wow, they're looking at shooting gallery now. Daly from the other point trying to get it across. And Kapustin chased back in there by Glenn Goldup. And the Marlies forechecking. Maybe taking a note out of the London Knights book. The Knights, winners over the select 6-3. Here's Howe closing in right in front. And a good check there by Volchenkov, which prevented Dillon from being that dangerous. Here's Gold up a shot. He's gone. thing about international hockey any goal sends the crowd in raptures well gold up has scored 19 times thus far this season he has 43 points and just persistence with a moscow select man hanging all over him but he uh, with that backhand found that lower right hand corner along the ice the dangerous shots along the ice 931 the marlies lead it two to nothing Marlboro's had played rather steadily and uh, not committed too many errors, but now with a little bit of a reckless approach, they seem to be playing it uh, to the Soviet style. Belusov over to Shalomov. There's a play right in front of the net. Get that puck away. The Soviets, if they keep buzzing around, they're going to come up with a goal here. But it, there's a call there as one of the Soviet players was dumped. That was Solodyukin. He's one of their better ones. One thing good to see about the Marlboro play that they're always headmanning the puck. If a man is ahead and in the clear, the puck is given to him immediately. It's even action that the NHL could copy. Divine is the man at 15-21. Hooking is the sentence. As the Soviets send Shalomov to center, they have Shatilov on the defense, Martinuk. And the Marley zone up against those boards, and it just ticks outside. Nikitushkin goes loose with Marin. Marin out there. Up against the glass out in the center ice to relieve the pressure for the moment. Nikitushkin. Kapushkin there, it's coming back. As the Soviets work it around. Shalomov closing in, gets it back to Shatilov over to Nikitushkin. And when they want to, they can pass it around. They still haven't had a shot on goal as yet, though, which is quite important in the Marley defense. Well, this is somewhat the style of play that you'll see with their uh, big team. Get that puck around until they get right in position. Good save by Palmatier on Martinuk. It's still loose. There's going to be another penalty here. Looks as though the Marleys are the culprits. It's 
they are. The Soviets keeping the pressure on. But the Russian goalie is asleep. He should be out of that net. That's right. Now he's he's about to make a move, and the bench is at his end. There's a shot stopped at the defense. The Russians still with it. Here's Martin Yuk closing in as the goalie now has made it there. They get the extra attacker on Nikitushkin with a shot. Martin Yuk center in front, and the Marlies finally halt play. There's a holding penalty going to be handed out, but that goalie stands certainly asleep. Should have been over there, and uh, well, as it seen, turned out, why they could have had uh, several seconds of uh, an extra attacker. He seemed uncertain to whom the penalty was given. Sixteen thirty-six is Clark as a two-minute sentence for holding, and the Dukes will play it two men short for thirty-five seconds. Three minutes fourteen seconds remaining from the face-off. Solodukin out there, over to the far side, getting it back to Volchenkov. Well, afraid of the Russians can get a goal in this situation, they will lose this game. There's a shot. Out comes to this side with Pumpov. Back to Pumpov. Astasiev is out there right across in front. There's the favorite play with the man coming in. And the Marlies get it out. Well, that's with even Thomas. A, that's even a sin that the Russian national team committed. They make one pass too many sometimes. Thomas Hughes and Devine out there. Devine is back now. A minute and 16 seconds remaining as number 21, Kapustin, went for a little uh, whirl on the ice courtesy of a Toronto Marley. A minute 16 seconds remaining in the penalty to Clark. The real connoisseurs of the game have always said that the Russians are just a little bit too artistic. And that was an example of their artistry at work where it didn't result in a goal. Winton and Ververgart are out there as the forwards with Daly and Hughes. A minute and seven seconds remaining. Popoff trying to work his way in, and Ververgart took control of that puck and sent it down the ice. Astasiev for Solodukin back to Astasiev, and then up to Popov. Popov, a shot stopped at the defense. Good play, but it's not out of the Marley zone. Kapustin moving around. There's his shot. Oh, a good save by Palmatier on Astasiev. Shot from the middle point. My, oh, my. Right Nobody in that net. slot to get that rebound, Fred. There's a little duel going on right in the slot between Hughes and Popov. And Hughes persisted. The Marlies getting that puck out of danger. 21 seconds remaining in the penalty. George Armstrong changing his troops on the goal. As Ferguson and Edger come out. Out of the attack. Long shot. Easily grabbed. Debutov with a hot shot there. But Palmatier out with the big right glove. And six seconds remain in the penalty to Clark. And the Marlies continue to lead two to nothing. With a minute and 20 seconds remaining in period number one at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. I was telling you how good... A hand that Mike Palmatier has, Fred. He seems to be gloving everything. Lobanov back to the point. They move in. The penalty is up to Clark as he returns to the ice, and the Marlies have withstood the selects despite the fact that they have played it two men short. And behind the net, Edger harassed back there. As Joff Green on the far side, they get the puck out in center. A race for it. It's Tedekin up against Green and Boudreau. Boudreau buzzing around and then Green in behind the puck up into the stands and there'll be a face-off called by referee Bob Naden at the top of the Soviet circle to the left of Kravolopov, who's had a reasonably easy time in the last few minutes as his mates have come to life. Stimulated by successive penalties to the Marlies, but they couldn't put the puck past Mike Palmatier, who was very stingy and had uh, good defensive support from his mates. It's Buder out there with Green and Woodyat. Woodyat getting one of the two Toronto goals. Still in the Soviet zone as 
Boudreaux was dumped unceremoniously and no call, and that's the rise from the crowd. A long headman pass for Shalomov down there as he works against Turkowitz. Well, Up Fred, the Marnies have played excellently in this period. They, I'm just beginning to wonder how good of a club they are because they've resisted all pressure here in this game, and they've come up with a 2 nothing verdict in this first period. Back to the point. Turkowitz getting it into the corner. Woodyat, along with Boudreaux as they scramble for it. And the period ends. A rousing ovation by the very, very good crowd at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. The score at the end of the first period, the Toronto Marlboros 2, the Moscow selects nothing. Early in red with white. That's center, Solodukin. He loses to Daly. Daly flips that puck into the Moscow zone. Kravolopov just leaving it there beside the net, but the Marlies with Daly again, a weak shot. And out it comes as Volchenkov gets it down into the Marley zone over the red line, and it'll be called for icing. Fred, in that first period, we notice that there are a great number of NHL scouts here. Almost every club in the NHL these boys under pressure conditions. Shot knocked down by Astasia, but here's Goldup circling in front, and Kravolopov flopped on that puck to halt play. Astasiev and Volchenkov are the pair of defensemen. Six and three. Astasiev in the white helmet from the faceoff, and that's Volchenkov. A long headman pass. Moving in, Kapustin. He scores! Kapustin. And there is a couple of trademarked efforts. One, the long headman pass. And then the other, good second effort. That's right. That's a play that the Russians do again and again. A man seems to be skating around center ice. There's a quick pass from the defensive oh, position, and he's away. Solodukin is the one that you saw with the Russian Nationals against Team Canada. Kazetchkin is out there, along with Lobanov. Lobanov upset, no call. In around behind the net, out in front. And they clear that puck, the Marlies, but there's a Marlboro that was draped. And that's gold up, and he is injured. Which is, oh, he uh, may have a Charlie horse problem the way he's going off there. Kazachkin, as the Marlies move to the attack. Now Tedekin. And here is Bordalo, great favorite with the fans, trying to make his way through the defense. And he's clotheslined there by Terrican. And away he goes. Really clotheslined on that play. Four minutes, 29 seconds, and the Marlboros will be able to trot out their power play, which wasn't too effective during the first period during a brief two-man advantage holding holding like he was almost going to take Bordelow's head off <laughs> that Paulin Bordelow is a wonderfully fast skater he I know I go way back on this Fred he reminds me of Howie Moran's in a way Stan I didn't think you were that old there's a <laughs> shot right off the target now the Soviets moving to, to the attack Martinyuk he buzzes around he reminds you of Maltsev and uh, Harlamov, those two <laughs> speedsters for the big Soviet team. Martinyuk again moving in. He's a threat at this point. He's used up almost half a minute of the penalty. Now the Marlboros to the attack. Edger couldn't control it. Comes loose and Edger has it again. Edger up against the boards. Marin, Marin takes a shot from... Soviet defenseman Nikitushkin they hold it up against the boards and play a stop but the Marlies have looked their least effective when they've had the advantage in manpower it's 
with the Russians, it, it seems that any time they get a man short, they do not go entirely into a defensive position. They still save a little bit for offense. Solodukin and Kapustin, who has the lone goal with his Stasiev and Volchenkov out there, comes back to the point. Shot by Turkowitz, easily stopped. Still in the Moscow zone, but not for too long. And here's a break. Going right in, Kapustin. Beautiful. Ten the net. A man short goal. Short handed goal. I was just saying, Fred, that the Russians do not go into a defensive position with a man short. And there's a, an example. A beautiful goal. By that very, very dangerous Kapustin. Well, Fred, the Soviets are certainly looking good in this period. They've come off and they're skating very, very fast. Quite a contrast to the first period where the Marlboros were the offensive people in the game. There's Palmatier uh, pulling a Jacques Plant as he went diving well out there to stop play with Shorin. Nikolai Shorin, number eight. He's been on infrequently. He's out there with Shalimov and Martinuk. You have Shatilov and Nikitushkin from the face-off out into center ice and the goal Marley's goal. This is a predominant Marley crowd for sure. Others are uh, hockey fans wanting to see a, a good hockey game and uh, they certainly are, but there's that core of Marley fans. Shorin almost uh, shook his mate Shalomov loose. Here it is with Boudreaux, a shot just off the target. Out into center ice is Shalomov. Took a check from Green. Out of the attack, Shatilov to Shorin. The far side for Martinuk. They close in. Martinuk, a shot. He scores! Martinuk, as Hughes went down, attempting to block that. And the puck went right through. And the selects are now in front. Polopov seems to have been told something in the first intermission because every time the puck is around his net now, he's gloving it and holding the puck. He's allowing no rebounds. Titov with Kazachkin. He goes loose in behind the net with Titov on the far side. Getting that puck out to Lobanov. The Marlies break it up. Now they get a chance again. Here's Bordalo. Very flashy board low taken out of play by Lobanov at the blue line. The Marley's showing a little more spirit and a little more aggressive deportment at this point as they try and get back in the hockey game. After leading two to nothing, they've given up three second period goals. Kazachkin lost that puck. Now it's Marin trying to get away from Lobanov. Now Kazachkin, as he moves in, and he gives up that puck. Devyatov giving it up. Terekin getting it in there as he and Marin collided. The far side, referee got into the play. Shorin, Shorin in around behind the net. He spearheaded the attack, drawing an assist on the go-ahead goal. Right in front, they score! Martinyuk! Scoring, and it was Shorin in behind again, Stan. Yes. Who did a lot of the spade work. But that man certainly possessed his wits at that time. He was behind the net. He was starting to skate into the open. He saw that no one was checking them, and he skated right out in front and put it in between Palmatier's legs. I think George Armstrong has done the right move there. He's got the goaltender out in time. It's just like in baseball where you must make a decision to draw or yank your pitcher. Well, this is what Armstrong has done with his goalies. There's Martinuk moving in, taken out of the play by Hughes. But the Soviets still in there, in behind the net, and Daly has it. There they're still buzzing around. Shalomov into the corner. Nikitushkin, a shot, good save by Neville, right in front, another good save. As they try to jam it in, that was Shorin trying to jam it in, so Neville comes up very large the first time the Soviets threaten. 
From the faceoff, Volchenkov has drawn two assists on the first two goals. Out in front of stop. Oh, good stop there. They got bat at it again, and Neville. There it's loose. But Neville foiling the Soviets. Nikitushkin. Along with Kapustin. Kapustin with the first two Moscow goals, and he could have had himself another. Volchenkov couldn't keep it in there. Astasiev goes back to cover up. With Boudreau in there, gives him a shot. Now it's starting to move. There's going to be a penalty there, and it's against the Marlies. Volchenkov on the far side. Solodukin takes a shot right at the blue line. Play call. And here's the penalty assessment from referee Naden. Oh, it is extremely heavy boarding call. The game is getting rough. There is no doubt about it. It's a little bit chippy. Boudreaux is the man. Boarding the call. 15 54. Clark just getting that puck through the zones down over the Soviet red line as Estasiev goes back. Volchenkov out there and Kapustin. Kapustin and Martinyuk. They've been the scorers. They've split up the four goals. Martinyuk trying to get it across in front. Intercepted by Turkowitz, who sends it into the Moscow zone. Here's Volchenkov. Pistachiev. Solodukin out there. It's the Solodukin, number 11. Offside as Kapustin was in on the left side. A little too quickly. Well, there's something you never see the Soviets do. Very seldom do they go offside. In fact, during a game, it's it's rare that you see them go offside three or four occasions. Clark, Turkowitz, Bordelow, and Marin out there to kill off the penalty. A minute 24 seconds remaining in the penalty to Boudreau. Long shot into the Soviet zone relieves the pressure just for the moment. Kazichin on the far side as the Soviets move into position. Lobanov, Lobanov getting it back to the point. He gets a return pass. Here's a shot stopped at the defense. Goes back to Kazichin again. Another shot skirts by the net. Titov in there and it goes out into center ice. The Russians hate surrendering that puck. They believe in puck control. Turchin outs to the far side there where Lobanov. They close right in. Oh. The shot just went wide. Devyatov still in the Marley zone. Lobanov as he closes in. Too much stick handling there. Now they get it back to the point. There's a shot. Gloved nicely by Neville. As Kevin Neville seems to be playing well. Yes, he stood up very well coming in um, cold in the middle of a period, middle of a game. And your team trailing by two. And he stood up to the pressure very well. He's catching on to these intricate Russian passing players around that goal mouth area. Number two, Nikitushkin is out there along with Shatilov. Nikitushkin across to Shatilov. Shatilov winds up a shot, steered to the corner. John Hughes getting it around on the boards. For Dillon, goes loose. He close in. Martinuk winds up. Oh, good fake moves right in a shot. Stopped at the defense as Dillon was there. But what a move! The penalty up to Boudreaux. He gets back into the play. And now he takes that back pass on the move along with Goldup who's out there after an apparent injury but he's back out and in play. Here's Dylan. Loses that puck. It's still in the Soviet zone but they break out. Here's Shalimov. A shot. Neville managed to kick out a leg at that one. Now Goldup in behind his own net. Shalimov threatened. Goes to the far side. How coming on this side to gold up, gold up. He's got Dylan with him. Open wing as How was anchored to the blue line. 
Not moving in. With Petrushka now, it's bowled up. Couldn't get a shot away. A Shatilov was there. Here's Shorin. Boy, he's been pesky. Yes, he has. There's Shalomov. And Hughes with less than a minute remaining in the period. Here's Shalomov getting it back. Twist and turn by Belisov. Astasiev getting it in. Trying to get it back to Astasiev. Belisov couldn't do it. Now it comes to the side. Gold up. Keeping it in the zone as he moves in. Checked for the moment. Dylan couldn't keep it in there, and it comes through into the Marley zone offside. Solidukin racing in very quickly, but he was ahead of the play. 34 seconds remaining. The Moscow selects four, and the Toronto Marlboros two. Well, Fred, what we are seeing here tonight are the best players of the Soviet Union, the best young players of the Soviet Union, the best players of Canada in the junior bracket. So it's an interesting confrontation. Solodyukin at center up against Marin. Marin getting a pass, a shot, good stick save out in front. As Winton tried uh, the Soviet soccer trick and it didn't materialize. Here's Kapustin racing in. Here's the shot right in front of Nevo. Makes the save with the speedy Belisov moving in and he just couldn't tip it by. Oh, Neville continues very steady since coming in midway of the period with 11 seconds remaining and a 4-2 count. Advantage the Moscow selects. Solodukin to center against Thomas from the faceoff. Ververgaard takes it. The dying moments of the second period in behind the net for Edger. The seconds tick off in the Marley zone. Ververgaard has it. As the period ends, so the second period of play, rather a turnabout. The Marlies taking a two to nothing lead in the first period on goals by Woodyad and Goldup. But in the second period, Kapustin with two. Bob Daly and John Hughes. Well, in this third Solid period, Dickens. Fred, we'll just see who has the endurance because both teams played last night. Solidukin, Kapustin, and Belisov. Now the Marlies. Here's Howe on the move. Breaking in. Gold up. Oh, no. Oh, look out. Gold up. Hitting that post heavily. And there, Stan, is the value of having a helmet. That's oh, right. boy. Yes. The center ice, it's Solodukin up against Boudreaux. Volchenkov, Boudreau trying to get around him, just couldn't control it. Volchenkov leaving it there for Kapustin. To Astasiev, Astasiev for Bolasov, Bolasov around behind the net out in front. And it's Boudreau banging it all the way down to goalie Kravolopov. Astasiev, a headman pass. Solodukin. Solodukin, oh, right in front, a good play there. But Belisov couldn't cash the lead pass. John Hughes trying to get out, it's into center ice. Solodukin it seemed like taking a, cross a check shot out. and there's going to be a penalty there. But the checking was a little high there. And it's Woodyat. We've got the opening goal of the hockey game getting the sentence at 3.01. Cross checking is the sentence. 3.01. A very so effective the, player for the Marlboros is Bruce Boudreau. He seems to be in there at all times, giving it all his strength. Marin and Bordolo out there, along with Ferguson and Edger. To kill off this penalty. Flipping that puck through center ice down to the Soviet zone. Where Kravolopov leaves it. Martinyuk. For Lobanov. Lobanov, a back pass. Controlling that play, moving in. A shot, he scores! Beautiful shot, yes. Devutov. What a shot there to the top right-hand corner. Power play goal. 
Well, he moved in very beautifully there, Fred. Looked up, banged it into that top corner. Extremely fast shot. 326, and they didn't take but 25 seconds to uh, take advantage of the manpower situation. Three twenty-six, and the Moscow team lead it five to two. Kazatskin in behind. There's a score. Dylan Wayne Dylan makes it five trays. He caught Kravolapov with his glove down and found the top left-hand corner. Now this predominantly Marlboro crowd is hungry for Marlboro goals. A great cheer went up when Dylan scored that goal. That puts them back in the game. They're not out of it yet, Fred. 5-3, Dylan scoring. Dylan has 24 goals thus far this season. Shalimov, check. And the crowd coming to life, Glenn Goldup. Trying to make his way out for Howe. Howe up against the boards for Goldup. Goldup moving in. Gold up drawing an assist at 352, 5 to 3 hockey game. Now the Marlies to the attack again. How? Can't seem to control that one. Gets by one Soviet man. He's got Dylan with him, but they're checked. And here's Martinuk with Shalomov. Martinuk closing in, takes a jolt from Ferguson. In behind the net, Dylan now comes out in front over to this side. Martinuk. Back at one point with Shatilov right in front, Martinuk, and it was stick checked away by Neville very neatly. Whoops, up into the crowd. And that halts play, relieving the pressure as the Moscow team coming right back to make it a little warm for the Marlies in their own zone. But that last scoring play, Dylan from Gold up at 352. And uh, that made the score five to three of 15 minutes and 13 seconds remaining. Well, I like the courageous play of Glenn Goldup. He's injured, but he's still in there fighting. Volchenkov was upset. No call. As Turkowitz in behind his own net. Getting it up there for Devine. Devine couldn't get it across for Bordalo. Now the Marlies. As they move to the attack, here's Bordalo closing in, getting around the defense, going right in, and they score! Just a beautiful goal, Fred. The way Bordalo swept in there, I was originally comparing him to Moran, but the way he swept in there, he looked like Rocket Richard in his heyday. in less than two minutes and you can't ask for more than that the Marlies coming to the attack Ververgaard losing but now here come the Soviet team with Devitov into the corner trying to get it loose gets it back to the point to Terrican and the Marlboros attempting to get it out and this certainly has put a lot of new life into the game. There's a shot. He scores! Titov as he found the top left-hand corner again. And Neville, a little unsteady on that one. That makes it 6-4. to four. Titov scoring. Oh, Neville seems to be a little bit weak on that top right-hand corner. That's two successive goals that have gone in there. He's waving at him in there. But this has turned into a great hockey game, Fred. In a 6-4 hockey game. Advantage the Moscow selects. Well, it's beautiful watching that Paul and Bordlow. He's certainly a skater, Fred. And I told you previous that he reminded me of Morans, but on that goal that he scored, he reminded me of Rocket Richard. And here's a race for it with Winton being outskated. But the Marlies have the puck again, trying for Winton on the left side. A pass from Edger. Winton moving right in there. 
Trying to get that puck away. It comes loose. And Shalimov on the move very speedily for the selects. There's Shorin. A shot stopped at the defense. Now the Marlies with Edger. Edger trying to move it out. Gets it out over the line. And it comes to Shatilov. Into the Marley zone is play a little scrambly now, and the puck shot through the center ice zone down into the Moscow zone. Where Shatilov starts play to Martinuk, and there's a man in the clear going right in a shot. And oh. a save on Solodukin, who was in cold turkey, and Neville foiled him. That's most exciting, Fred, and that play, in that particular play. The Russians seem to observe the time left in the clock, and they seem to be playing Posum in their defensive zone, deliberately drawing the opposition into them, and suddenly there's that tremendous pass up through center ice, and the man is away free. And there, uh, Kevin had to pull off a great stop. That solid Yukon down there reminds you, he, he seems to be a lanky one. He's cut off of the uh, bolt of Yakushev. Yes, he is. And Yakushev, one of the top players on the first Soviet team and Yakushev uh, one of the stars in that Team Canada series as a matter of fact Kapustin with Solodukin as they come to the side Volchenko with an errant pass here's Woody at a weak shot into the Soviet zone Volchenkov there's the, there's the soccer bit again kick it out Bolasov Trying to get it away. Woodyat came across to hand him a jolt. And the puck is back into the Moscow zone. Volchenkov with Woodyat there chasing him. Now it comes back to the point. A long high shot by Turkowitz. Went right outside of the playing area. Aaron to center with De uh, Devine and Bordalo. Nikitushkin has come out there now. Along with Shatilov, Nikitushkin giving chase as Marin is in after him. Headman pass to Shorin, rink wide pass from Martinuk. Martinuk into the Marley zone, and he's checked away from that puck by Devine. Now Shorin, a one hander out to Nikitushkin. The shot stopped. Here's a race. Here's Bordelow. This should be a contest. Bordelow moving in and he's pulled down. There's going to be a penalty there as Bordelow is pulled down. And the fans undoubtedly would figure that maybe we should have a penalty shot. Oh, that was a good race for the puck. The Marty's fastest skater, Paul in Bordelo. From the faceoff, it's Estasiev up against the boards as the Marley's with gold up. Gold up trying to keep control of it. Coming loose, in behind, Dillon, now he gets it back over on the far side, and that gold up's a real scrapper, I'll tell you. Yes, he is. He's Kapustin, in there. Houston, out over his own blue line to center ice, with a minute and five seconds remaining in the penalty, a shot. He scores! Oh, what a shot that was to pick the... That's three minute, goals for Kapustin. The minute opening on the right side, as he was coming in. You know that Martinuk is not in the game at all now. This is the last game of the Soviet tour, so I guess he's looking forward to that plane back to Moscow, isn't he? Don't you think so, Fred? <laughs> well, it's always nice to go home, no matter uh, where you're from, but, uh, you know, when they come outside the Soviet Union, Stan, the uh, Soviet hockey representatives live pretty well. And There's a goal! Well, that was a deflection as Kravolopov seemed to do a little sit down there and the puck just curled up and over and we'll have to wait for the official at 7 to 5 3 minutes 32 seconds remaining and don't go away I think that Martinuk has contaminated the Russians a little bit there his nonchalant attitude has led to that goal the, the Russians have fallen asleep a little bit the Marlies are still in the game could be Winton is the man but we'll wait for the official 16-28 and it's 7 to 5 so if goals uh, make a hockey game, the fans should go away delighted with this one. And uh, they should, because it's been quite a game. From the faceoff, Kapustin. There's Winton scrapping in there. Astasiev comes up with the puck. 
over on the far side as Belisov right in front of the shot Neville kicked that one away Solodukin moving in quickly now the Dukes to the attack Edger Ververgaard Winton was right from Ferguson good play there by Ferguson to get that puck out of danger all those wide passes with men in between there's Winton back to Winton again Winton as they move right in a shot oh and a good play there by Kravalipov moving right in a shot he scores Devyatov and oh what a shot there as he was unmolested drifting through and that makes it 8 to 5 Titov just bumps it ahead a fake Lobanov trying to center in front of shot hits the post Devyatov and he was right in position of the side of the circle my oh my there's something penalty there as Marin was upset And the Moscow Selects run into another penalty. However, it doesn't seem to make all that much difference because they've scored twice while they've been short a man. you got to give Neville credit there. Here was the situation. His team Moscow down 8-5, eight, eight, and, and he was rushing to the bench. Kazachkin for tripping. At 18.32, and the Marlies should refuse the penalty. And the puck back into the Marley zone, where Daly coming out toward his own blue line. We cross center. There's a pass for Gold up, legging it in. Nikitushkin back to Dylan. A shot hit the post. They score. Oh, banging it in. Eight to six. A lot of scoring in this game. 33. Unfortunate to hit the post on the first try, but... Well, Fred, that's been the story. That's been the story of this Marlboro Club. They never quit. How from Dillon at 19.33, an 8-6 hockey game. And choice entertainment indeed for a crowd in rather of a festive mood as befits the season. Coming in here and seeing a total of 14 goals, plenty of excitement, a lot of very, very good play, and wide open hockey. Fired into the Marlboro zone where Edger gives chase. 20 seconds remaining. The Marley's still trying to cut it down there as Kapustin. He kicked that one back in behind the net, trying to center it in front. Hits a leg, and out come the Marlies with Green. Now in over the line. Boudreau tried to get through. And here is the Kapustin as he controls the puck, almost symbolic of the way the game went toward the end after giving up two first period goals to Woodyad and Goldup. But the final score, a very entertaining game indeed. The Moscow selects eight and the Toronto Marlboros six. The game at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. That's all for now. Fred Scambati on behalf of Stanabodiak. So long. <laughs>